The menus in the Evil One are accessed by the menu button, which you can get on the remote control, or you can get on the side of the camera, or you can use the remote app. Any way you want to, you can get at the menus. And the menus in this camcorder are a little bit different than in prior Panasonic handhelds, in that they're pretty much two layers. So you go into the main menu, then you go into a sub-menu, and then you make your selection. Because of that, it can be a little more complex, it takes a little bit longer to learn where all the menu items are. I mean, sometimes I still get lost right now in the menus, and I wrote the book on the camcorder, which is a great way to learn how the menus operate. Panasonic's made available for free, a free download. The book that I wrote is called The Guide to the Eva One Camcorder, and you can download it, and the nice thing about it being electronic, you can just search wherever, whatever term you're looking for. If you're, if you're looking for the zebras, there's actually maybe three different menus that the zebras might occur in because in the user switches, you can enable zebras or you can set the zebra detect level in another section or you turn the zebras on and off by pressing the user button that you've assigned to the zebras. How do you know which part you're looking for? Either learn the menus really well or just search in the book <laughs> and search for zebras and it'll bring up every instant of what you can do. But the great thing that the EVA has done it's a very powerful camcorder, much more powerful than anything that Panasonic's produced in this price range, much more powerful. And the menus are very detailed and complex and there are many things you can do with them, but you can also access them so easily. Panasonic's made this wonderful innovation, the home screen. When you bring up the home screen, it tells you pretty much everything that you wanna know. It gives you information, detailed information, on every aspect of the camera, what the shutter speed is, what the iris is, what the white balance setting is, what the frame rate is, and the current codec, and everything like that. And then when you want to change one of those items, you just touch it because it's not just a display, it's actually a menu. So you want to change shutter speed, touch the shutter speed icon, and it'll take you to the menus where you can change the shutter speed without having to know that you would have had to go into a certain menu and then into a certain sub menu and then into a certain field and then changing a list. You don't have to go through that process. You can just use the home screen and access exactly what items that you want to get at. Now, obviously the home screen is not going to let you control every possible function and that you really do need to take the time and learn the menus because there's a tremendous amount of power and controllability in there. You can customize this camera in so many different ways. You can have it output on the LCD and on the SDI and on the HDMI different outputs. You can have it mirror the LCD on the other outputs. You can have it give you a straight video signal or you can have it give you a video signal with overlays and you can mix and match. Maybe you want the HDMI to have the overlays and the SDI to be a clean video feed. And maybe you want the LCD to have all the camera information. Maybe you don't want the LCD to have all the camera information. Maybe you want the LCD to be a, a pristine clear image because maybe the camera operator wants to just frame and they don't want to worry about all the detailed information that's on there. You can go in and customize every piece of information that shows up on that LCD or disable it all. That's not something you're going to be able to do from the home screen. The home screen is for quick access to everything that an operator is likely going to want to change in the middle of a shot. So selecting your frame rate and variable frame rate, very quick access through the home screen. But for detailed control, you have to go into the menus, you have to learn how the menus work, and for that I recommend downloading the book and studying it. It's very complex, it's incredibly powerful, and once you learn the menus and master them, you're going to be able to really make this camera sing. I hope this has been helpful and given you an introduction into how this camera works and how to get the best from it. For more information, please stay tuned to the rest of the videos in this series for even more tips and tricks on how to use your Evo One camera. Panasonic.